Man, I'm tired. <laughs> you? I haven't I pulled an all-nighter since my first kid was born 40 years ago. But <laughs> it, what's true? Tony, remind me, what, what are we doing today? Okay, we're going to try something impossible. For the first time in our uh, stud career, we're going to try to do 30 architectural styles in 30 minutes and in chronological order so the audience can get a pretty good perspective of America's architectural styles. So oh. what did you guys discover last night during your big studies? Huh. Well, I discovered the bungalow. It's a house that I actually grew up in in the 1950s yeah. and 60s. And I realized, you know, we're actually building a lot of these today, at least components of these homes, because it's a very popular style. Well, the Foursquare. I remember does, selling a right. bunch of those, don't you, I do. about 40 I years do. ago? And the Foursquare comes in different shapes and sizes, and I think we're going to talk about that today. Yeah, in fact, I know we're using some parts and pieces. Like, we have the Italianate Foursquare. Right. What else do we have? The Prairie Foursquare. Colonial Revival, for example. Foursquare. And the Craftsman. Oh, yeah. Can be Foursquare. Absolutely. Square. Yeah. I've, I've been studying the Craftsman all night, Lonnie. That ties in very closely with the bungalow homes. Uh, most people think of bungalows when they hear the word Craftsman, but actually it's more arts and crafts style home. Um, it made its way through from Europe over here in the early 1900s, and that's my favorite wow. thing about seeing how trends revolve. We're building a ton of things that have to do with craftsman style homes from the early 1900s. That'll be fun. They need to stick large out. Watch what we're going to do on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, large outdoor living spaces. We'll see interior built-ins, uh, natural materials on the exterior of the house, stone and wood, um, deep porches, dormers. Wow, that's a lot too. there's a lot to it. Well, I love the modern, and so I've been working on this Lego set trying to finish this up here because, I mean, really every style that we do today has some pieces and parts of modern, whether it's modern craftsman, modern ranch, modern bungalow, we have it all. Wait, I thought, you, I thought you, she was just playing. Yeah, yeah, you said you put that together? <laughs> well, I, fin I finished putting it together. Well, well, rather than studying all night, what I did was I played with Legos all night. So I, I just finished up the Roby house here, which is based in Chicago, and there is, this is considered the perfect example of prairie style oh. and prairie style is considered the first true american architectural style and it's also the most influential into how our houses look today and prairie is all about making it look one with nature so rather than putting a house right on top of the hill they made it look like it was all part of yeah. the existing landscape all along and that means long horizontal structures and very large overhangs. In fact, we just did about three of those just like that yeah. in mm -hmm. the hill, mm -hmm. in the country, yep. in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. And this was inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright. He was the architect when it comes to American architecture. He built Falling Water, which we have right here. So did here. I. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, I was there. Yes. You guys were never there. About four years ago, I went to it, and it is absolutely drop dead. It is stunning. Guy. And we've had a lot of inspiration through Frank Lloyd right in what we build. Well, I'm just going to say, you better, how many pages of oh, I know. do you have here? Look, there's even some in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. sure. That's a good point. So as you're studying all about Frank Lloyd Wright and looking at everything here in America, I've been going back to our original roots, mm -hmm. going back to the Gothic, Oh, going back <laughs> overseas, seeing what it all, remember when we all went to St. Paul's? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is an that amazing example of Gothic. And you have the high spears, you've got the traceries, you have the stained glass windows, and then my favorite part of them all, the gargoyles. Yeah, I noticed you had a book on that. Wait, dude. <laughs> Most people don't even know what a gargoyle is. What is it? Gargoyles were the first gutter and spout system. <laughs> because you had more of a flat roof, you had to have the water go away, so they started doing it to have the water get away from the building. And then they decided, since they were using the style in a lot of churches, they were going to make them a little more grotesque looking to try to scare away all of the evil spirits. So the gargoyles were really the first gutter system. <laughs> okay, stay tuned. He's going to explain that in a little more detail in a second. Guys, we got to open the show up. So why don't you pick all the books up? Let's okay. get ready to open the show and okay. stay tuned. We're going to do this rapid fire. Are we still have coffee? Welcome to Between the Studs. We are Granite Ridge Builders, custom builders serving Northern Indiana, Northwest Ohio, and also parts of Southern Michigan. We have been building custom homes for almost two decades, and we're really passionate about what we do. So join us today as we explore the processes, the trends, and also tips that characterize today's new home. Thanks for watching. Well, today is a special edition of Between the Studs. Today we're going to explain why at Granite Ridge Builders we rarely build the same house twice, mm -hmm. 
why under our roof we have five draftsmen that sit down with our customers and we lay out these plans and, and these new homes that realize their dream. And a lot of it has to do with architecture, style, and design. And that's not just with the architectural draftsmen. We also have five designers to help you put <laughs> together all of the colors and styles and put it all together. Yeah, and we feel like it's such an important part of the building process. We spend hundreds of hours every year just studying architectural styles, principle, design elements, because chances are when you sit down with us, your plan is actually going to be what we call eclectic, which is going to take parts and pieces of all these different types of styles and marry them together, but we have to make sure it looks good. And that's why we decided today we're going to take you guys on a history tour of American architecture all the way from the 1700s through today. Wow. Uh, why don't we give some examples of what we're going to talk about today and why it's so important? Well, one example is the Italianate style. We're going to talk about that. And that incorporates brackets. Well, we're doing a lot of brackets in our new homes. That's probably one of the biggest requests. And then think about a craftsman or a bungalow. They've got the big, deep front porches. We're doing a lot of those as well. Yeah. Now, we have a lot of principles that we take from Frank Lloyd Wright, anywhere from the Craftsman and Prairie style, but we've mixed that and put it with modern, too. We've done low-sloped roofs and, like you mentioned, the bigger porches. Um, we have a lot of materials that he used, those natural styles. So we'll see a lot of that mixed in the architectures that you were saying, and we're going to call them eclectic now. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna break this into five categories for you. First of all, we're gonna talk about colonial. That's that 1700 you talked about. We're gonna go into that. We're going to then go into neoclassic. That is where the Greek, the Roman theories came in with Adams and Georgian style. Then we're gonna hit Victorian. That's one I like. That's that picturesque um, porch style that you might think of, the Gothic that you like. That's that style. And then we're gonna to go to the new American versions. That would be the prairie, the bungalow, the craftsman. And last, probably most important, is the modern style. And we're gonna break that into about 10 categories for you. So you will not wanna miss this show. Hang on, we're gonna hit 30 in 30 minutes. Welcome back. Okay, guys, you ready? We're going to try to hit five categories, and we're going to have subcategories during this. So the first one is going to be colonial. And colonial was back in the early 1600s, 1700s, went even into the 1800s. And we've got four subtitles. So let's talk a little bit about colonial. Okay, well, one of them that comes to mind is the Cape Cod. And the Cape Cod was typically a very simple home. I'd call it symmetrical, and the roof was, steep, was sloped very steeply. They let the snow get off of it. And also, it allowed rooms on that second floor, which we still take advantage of today. Um, also, things like shutters might have been put on the windows and uh, things we call dormers. I think we're going to talk about that. And it typically had clapboard siding. Some areas in New England had the cedar shake siding on a Cape Cod. There was that also a Cape Ann which was very similar to the Cape Cod, except it had a gambrel roof. That's basically the difference. So number three, stepping away from the Capes, we're moving into what's called the Georgian style. And the reason it got its name was because during the 1700s to the revolution, we were under the reign of George I, II, and three. <laughs> so it's the George, Georgian. And uh, the Georgian style was firmly rooted in the Roman architecture. So very symmetrical, very balanced, uh, and it kind of, started stepping away from the medieval that you saw a lot overseas. So they kind of took that step away from medieval and made something that was very proper. The interesting part about that is you actually have a North Georgian and a Southern Georgian. And in the Southern Georgian, there was a lot of lime down in Georgia in that Southern region. And so they were able to make bricks very easily. And most of the people who were migrated towards the South were from the English territories. The, they were Masons. That's who came over. So they have a lot of brick fronts and sides and backs mm -hmm. in the Southern style of those homes. Yeah, no. Another identifying feature between the North and the South is fireplace placement. And the north, obviously, you're going to want to have more heat inside of your house. So the fireplace would be inside with the chimney going out. Um, southern 
Georgian styles would have the fireplace on the outside of the house so that way it doesn't have as much direct heat inside because it's got warmer climates. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing you have to talk about, the most identifiable feature is windows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, um, they had double hung windows back then. Mm -hmm. You had grids in them. You can see that they, in the earlier times, they had very small pieces of glass because that's how they would mull them. Then they had larger pieces of glass. But there's two terms, fenestration. That is mm -hmm. the window placement. Mm -hmm. Most of these were very symmetrical. So you might have what we call five rank on the top, five rank on the below. That's how you can identify most Georgian styles. Now the structure itself is pretty simple, but they're dressed up with beautiful cornice boards. The front doors uh, typically have some fluting around them, some decorative features. Yeah, you'll see pediments kind mm -hmm. of going back to what you said with the Roman, that it they'll kind of ties together there. Okay, then what happened is we, get, we did the Adam style. Basically, it was a Georgian style. It just got more ornate. There was a lot more garland on the front, different frieze boards, um, different coin corners. So those are your four styles for colonial. So the second era of American architecture that we need to talk about is the neoclassical revival. And under that, there are three basic categories. We have federal, we have the Greek revival, and then we have beaux art. Now we just got done talking about the colonial, and the colonial was mainly based on Roman architecture. Sure. This, the neoclassical, is based more on Greek architecture. And there is a few subtle differences there, uh, but the big thing is, is that the Greeks were definitely very obsessed with symmetry and geometry. So everything they did just took that into account. And as we unpack these styles, I think you'll be able to see that. Now the first one is the federal style, and it's considered very British. It's a very British style. And uh, at the time, most of the people who had these type of homes were considered the wealthy in the American culture. And a lot of them, I think, were merchants coming yes. over delivering yeah. goods mm -hmm. to the American colonies. Mm -hmm. And this style, it's all brick. The windows are a six rank over six. And then they feature typically a splayed lintel above each window in a keystone. They all have a small portico on the front porch, so a couple of columns, and then a fan light, so uh, kind of a half circle above your front door. And then a lot of them feature a Palladian window as well. And also the roof, it moves from a gable style to a hip style and typically was sloped less because they got new materials that are gonna shed the water a little better. Mm -hmm. so. Now speaking of roofs, Greek Revival is our next one. Mm -hmm. Greek Revival is very interesting. In fact, most of those homes that were built in federal had gable roofs. If you take that gable roof, turn the building sideways, you now have a gable that is in the front put some pillars or pilings on top of that, you've got Greek Revival. And now our country was built on Greek Revival. Many of our federal buildings, all mm -hmm. banks, mm -hmm. all of those were Greek Revival, but there was definitely an influence in the single family type with Greek Revival too. You're gonna think of these homes as plantation homes, New England, uh, huge mm -hmm. columns, huge columns, and lots of them with big porches, a lot of the ionic columns, and, and so a little bit more decoration to it, but still very symmetrical. Then there's also the bow art style. And when we think of this style, you know, think of a courthouse, right, Tony? Uh, yeah, I guess. Look at a courthouse. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Uh, but you are looking at a lot of marble on the inside of these. You're looking at a lot of columns and a lot of decorative pieces and over the top in a lot of ways when it comes to the Beaux-Arts style. As you can see with the first two areas that we've covered, lots of symmetry, lots of principle uh, that we had to follow with all the columns and the, the room layouts. This next one we're going to throws all that out the window and we get really interesting with some of these uh, eras on the next one. So let's go check it out. Now the next era in the architectural styles that we need to talk about is the Victoria oh, era. Yeah. And that's a really interesting era. Take, take place from 1830 to the turn of the century and it was known as the Romanticism era. So think of things like mystery, and lots of asymmetrical. Basically anything that was eccentric was in. Uh, so things that at one point seemed like, oh, that would never sell or never get built, was getting pulled into these, these type of houses. So um, in this era, there are six styles that we need to talk about. So we're gonna talk about Gothic, we're gonna talk about Italianate, Second Empire, the Stick style, the Queen Anne, and then the Shingle style. The Gothic style, like I mentioned earlier, this is a style that is very, very ornate. It has a lot of steep gables to it. It has a lot of decoration in it. A lot of hand-done details that were done in these Gothic style homes that weren't done in anything else. We have a lot of recessed front porches, a lot of arches that are taking place in these. This is a, this is a style that just, ornamentation is 
everywhere. Got a bad rap because a lot of people thought it was more of a haunted style house because a lot of them didn't go abandoned at one point. But these are just gorgeous homes. Another thing, the Victorian era was also called the picturesque era, and you yeah. can see why. Some of these homes are just amazing yeah. to watch. Now mine that I'm going to talk about is Italianate. This is probably one style that is coming back so fast in our day today, you can almost call it the modern Italianate. And that means this, we've got brackets, usually there is paired brackets, mm -hmm. there's paired windows, skinnier windows, paired windows, sometimes they have towers, many of them were arches, verandas on the front, meaning big porches, that picturesque porch style they used to call it, but Italianate is absolutely in even today, but it was very, very popular in the 1900s, even in the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. And you can't talk about eccentric styles without talking about the Second Empire. Oh. <laughs> it, it is inspired directly from the skyline of France. Um, it's, it's those short mansard roofs that are steep pitched. You got the ornate railing across the top, the crest. Um, you'll see those front porches that protrude out that are pavilion style front porches that's just beautiful. oh wait my favorite place in the world you have to mention <laughs> disney. disney world yep, disney. you'll notice that when you walk up to disney that's the basic look of a mansard yep. roof now i have stick style and i think this is more identified probably by cottage style uh, the outsides were typically all wood a lot of um kind of leans towards the craftsman in a couple years as well but i think this is where we got verandas from because they were mostly large porches and verandas oh. um, you have the lattice work on the bottom of the the porches and lots of columns so you can definitely identify that as like the cottage sort of and stick style there's lots of wood and then the Queen Anne style. A lot of these have big bay windows. They may have three or four on the front of the home. It's a great expression of wood. There's a lot of wood detail from shake, um, different cornices. The front porch is a lot of times recessed. And a lot of these homes were row houses or they were really sprawling homes. And probably the most identifiable Queen Anne style homes, I would say, are the Painted Ladies in San Francisco. <laughs> And then finally, there's the shingle style home. And this home originated primarily on the East Coast and coastal areas. It screams uh, the sea or the ocean. And, uh, but today, we're taking those shakes. And by the way, it's, it's basically, you can picture a shingle on a roof, how that looks. You put that on the sides of your home. That's basically what it is. It's usually out of cedar. And today we're using a vinyl product, we call it a, a vinyl shake, and we're putting it in gables and in some cases all around the homes as well. It's coming back. So as you guys can hear, the Victorian era really was only limited by your imagination. And as Tony mentioned, they were very picturesque homes, so uh, a very beautiful time in American architecture. So the last era we have to talk about is what's called the New American Versions. And this took place in late 1800s, early 1900s, and it's probably the one that was the most influential on the houses that we build today. And among those styles was the Prairie style, which was famous for Frank Lloyd Wright, and it was considered the first true American style, because all of these styles had nothing to do with the, the old European influences. So we had the prairie style, then we had the craftsman style, bungalow, and then followed by ranch. Now I love the prairie style because it's long horizontal lines. You'll see huge projecting eaves, which gives you a lot of nice porches and porticos. Um, so this is a very identifiable style, and we even have termed a prairie grill style after this architectural And painter. I love the woodwork in those houses. Absolutely. Oh, beautiful. And that's one of the things that I love the most about craftsman style. Mm -hmm. It takes a real specific look at the craftsmanship that they put into these houses. Oh, it, yeah. it focuses on natural materials, the stone and wood that they put on the exterior, and it also focuses on outdoor living, which really hits home for me. And a lot of those were not machine made, they were man made. Mm -hmm. That was the true craftsman back then when for they sure. had the craftsman style that came out. And then the bungalow style, you take a craftsman and you just make it a little bit smaller. <laughs> it's not quite as ornate, but that's your bungalows. And then ranch style started after World War II. Everybody wanted to go to just one level, really open. Well guys, I think we've done a good job covering the history. Now we need to talk about modern. Everybody's talking about that, but there's a lot of studying between now and then because there's like 11, 12, 13 different types of modern. So better go study before we get to that we next We better take a break and let's go study on that. Okay, this last segment is probably the most important segment because everybody wants this style today and it's modern, but here's the problem. How do you define modern? We're gonna try to hit about 10 
types of styles and architectural about modern. But where did the word modern come into? Is it contemporary? Is it industrial? What is it? So does anybody have a little history for it? Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about how modern got its start. It started in the period between the First World War and the Second World War. Um, advances in technology and industrialization led to new materials. So we were able to get plywood and we were able to get steel reinforced concrete, um, new steel products, all sorts of widespread products readily available to us. Yeah, Mike, and you mentioned new products, but there was also a shortage of material out there at the time. So this term form follows function really started becoming, you know, something people were talking about. What that means is they were focused more on what function each part and piece of the house was taking. So like brackets, for example, no function. So they just took them off and it became very basic and no thrills in a house. Uh, and so that's how that kind of became this modernism between you and what, what I said. And it's really the start of the open concept in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. The whole modernism movement was openness. And in some ways, like Luke was talking about, it's getting rid of some of that ornamentation because yep. it didn't suit a purpose whatsoever. Now we're kind of seeing it come back. Yeah. So when I say modern, what do you think of? I think of glass, mm -hmm. and I also think of white. Yeah, what do you yeah. guys think of when I say modern today? Flat roofs. Oh, yeah. More and more lines. flat roofs, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. of glass. Glass. Yeah. Yeah. Lots Metal. of glass. Mm -hmm. We're doing a lot yep. of that. So today, though, we're, you're taking that word modern, and we're putting it on some old architectural styles. Like, give me some examples. For example, we built a number of Cape Cods, and we'd actually have to call them modern Cape Cods. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the bungalow, I know we just finished up a few cute bungalows, and I would term those more of a modern looking bungalow. There's a great example of a modern Creole that we've done mm -hmm. yep. up, up on the lakes. That house is gorgeous. And I got to stick with that modern craftsman style. We've built a couple of those as well. Yeah, and let's not forget Queen Anne. Modern Queen Anne, what that means is large, pronounced front porches. And we're doing a lot of modern ranches. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that we've said this, let's take and break down the word modern, put something behind it, and let's define that style for our audience. Mm -hmm. So to talk a little bit more about that modern craftsman, modern bungalow style, it's, it keeps a lot of the same features as the old style bungalow and craftsman. It just is updated with interior layouts that are open, clean lines, white, um, still has those big front porches, low sloped roofs, um, but Raptor it's got a tails. Lot. How yeah. about brackets? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, bigger, wider E's. Mm -hmm. We're doing a lot of those too. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Now I love the mid-century modern style. That's a style that you might think back of with the Brady Bunch probably in the 70s. <laughs> um, it was actually started by uh, the boho movement um, and we just decided to term it a little bit more modern. Again, the, the clean has taken a lot of the decoration out of it. We're not quite doing shag carpet anymore or the, <laughs> the green colors, um, but you really do see a lot of the mid-century with um, a lot of white. You'll see a lot of white interiors, black windows. It's one of those styles that's easy, recognizable, once you know what to look for. And like I said, you're looking kind of for that 70s theme. The modern industrial is another one that you see. It has a lot of the straight lines. It's very sleek looking. And they use the term industrial because it is bringing in more pipes. It's bringing in more hardware, bringing in more pieces of factories with oversized lighting. That's a really big thing and right now. I think the exterior of this house we're behind is what you mm -hmm. termed it. Oh yeah. Modern industrial. Yes. yes. And then there's modern international. You don't see a lot of that in our area. It's made up of mainly uh, black steel, yeah. concrete, and glass. So it's common in a lot of office buildings. Uh, 1958 was really the first building in Manhattan that was the international style. And of course, now they cover Manhattan. We also uh, would refer to the shed roof or the shed roof modern home today. Uh, that's very, very popular. Oftentimes we'll use a shed roof, which is just kind of a slope, a very simple mm -hmm. slope on pergolas or back, back porches or across the front of the home. It's a very beautiful concept and we'd call that modern. Yeah. How about modern prairie? Um, we built a house over here in Tullymore, and that is modern prairie. You've got to come and see it, and those have those vaulted ceilings the shed and roof. shed yeah, roofs do. in the back. The back right. We also built quite a few of those homes lately. Yeah. Here's another really interesting one, modern brutalism. Mm -hmm. Not my favorite, <laughs> but a lot of people do like it. It's basically concrete. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as I can say. A lot of um, college campuses, a lot of downtown buildings are all out of that modern brutalism. So we are still doing a little bit today, Maybe not as much favor, but it is interesting style. Now let's talk about modern Miesian. It's kind of an unusual name and it gets its name from the architect Ludwig Mies. And he is known as the father of the glass house. And the Miesian basically means that they've elevated the, the floor to make it kind of look like it's floating. Then they put large steel beams in it and then filled the rest with glass. 
Wow. And so privacy wasn't a factor with these homes. Uh, and the interesting, this is the Farnsworth building in Chicago, probably the, one of the most well-known. And the rest of the story is Farnsworth sued Meese because of three things. The house always flooded, and they actually raided these type of houses and how many buckets you would need to catch the rain. And the steel beams rusted, and then they couldn't go outside at night because there was bugs that came from miles because it was a large glowing box when the lights were on. <laughs> well, speaking of the bucket, I think they used to call that the two-bucket home. Yep, two-buck home. And then guess what falling water was called? The seven-bucket seven, yeah. home. So it's kind of got that same thing, especially on the prairie style with those cantilevers yeah. and concrete. Again, same thing. Well, right now we are excited to be building a lot of modern ranch homes. Yes. So we've got the big, deep over overhangs, the low sloped roofs. Right. We're taking a lot of our standard plans and really transforming them into the modern ranch look. Now, I'd have to say the last one in the modern movement has to be the modern farmhouse, which is one of the most popular ones we're doing right now. You'll recognize the modern farmhouse is usually mostly an all white front. Um, a lot of metal accents on that as well as especially in roof styles and things there. And then the interior, you can definitely tell what we're going for with lots of glass, tons of shiplap and a lot of the warm, rustic sort of feelings goes into that modern farmhouse, which is a really fun trend to bring back from about 50 years ago or so. You know, there's another term that I hear used with modern, and that's the term Art Deco. Oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. what brought it to mind is when we were at the museum in Auburn the other day, they referred to that style as Art Deco. I'm not okay. sure what it is. Now, I've been studying that, and since we were up all night, I couldn't memorize everything. So I have it here uh, to talk about because it is a little bit interesting. Um, the term Art Deco derives from a title in 1925, a Paris design. It was a fair that was going on. Now, they called it the Exposition Internationale des Arts Decoratifs de eight industrialist modernist. I'm wait, so oh, glad. Wait, wait. Two more times, but really yeah. fast. I don't know if I can do that again, but I'm glad they just shortened it to Art Deco because that's a lot easier to say. Um, but this is where numerous rooms in the style were on display. So um, it had it appeared in World War I. Um, it's a blend of modernism, history, fantasy, and then influenced by the speed, uh, there was there was speed infused design um, back then in, in the World War uh, One time. And it brought in images, um, Italian futurists, the mystical images of Mayan, Assyrian, and Moorish cultures. So you have a lot of those designs in the Art Deco that really uh, play, f bring in a lot of cultures, which is really cool about it. Yeah, and another building that has that Art Deco uh, style is the Chrysler building in New York City. At the mm -hmm. very top, you look at that and it just screams. Art Deco. Another Art Deco all over the state. We have a lot of county courthouses mm -hmm. oh, that are definitely in there. Of course I am. <laughs> Everything on the Hey guys knows it well. We are running out of time. We've got to close the show. I hope you found this interesting. I know we found it really fun as we um, kept up all night. We're, we're getting this for you. We're going to go ahead and close. Let's get up. Ready to go. Yep. Okay. okay guys, we're running out of time. we got to close the show. But before we do, my favorite house is for sale. If you want a modern home, it's on the market. So out in Leo, Tullymore Run, our modern ranch home, it has everything. First of all, it has a gorgeous yard. You're not gonna find another yard or lot like this. And a fountain, fully landscaped, amazing entryway. Outdoor living, we have pavers. And don't forget about the appliance package in that. Those appliances <laughs> in that house are just drop dead gorgeous and it will make cooking so easy for anybody. The porcelain wall, you can't duplicate this house. No. You can't find another home like this in Fort Wayne. Two porches, they have our favorite, the mm -hmm. vaulted style in the back. Two porches, unbelievable look, design, it and a view is to die for. But uh, we got to close, Kayla, would you close for us? Absolutely. Thank you all so much for joining us today. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please pick up the phone and give us a call. Visit our website, or even better yet, come into any one of our model homes or showroom. We would love to talk to you all about architectural styles. Hey, we forgot about the big oversized three-car garage in that house. I well, know. That's true. I'll hear that. Let's go over and take a tour of it. Let's go do that.